Can we talk a little bit about chart entries and customizing notes? Yes. Okay. So let's hop into the staff profile. So if I hop into Joe Ellen specifically as the practitioner I'm working with, we're going to be able to change some things or offer some things for, for Joe Ellen. So if I go into templates, what I can do is I can create a new template. So using this little, I call it a Rubik's cube. I can either create a note. Um, and maybe I want to make this my primary concern and I can save that. Maybe I want to add on a, uh, let's see, body chart. Where's my body chart? There we go. I can do that, but maybe I don't like this picture. So I'm going to change the image here. But truthfully, what I see being utilized a lot is the template library. So if I come up to the top, right beside new template is template library. And I call this the Pinterest of Jane because <laughs> everything in here has been very graciously uploaded by a practitioner and we get to download that, those and manipulate them. So if I come into physiotherapy, there's about 9,000 that I can work with. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you have maybe a note uh, that you prefer, like a soap note, or is there one? That yeah, I'm actually curious if mine has ever, uh, if I inputted it, if oh. you want to check. Yeah. Uh, I think I did, but I, I could totally be wrong. So let me see what I named it. I think it was cardial palm eval. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, you're testing me. <laughs> hold on. Templates. Yep. Cardio Palm, C A R D I O P U L M, and then evaluation. And I may not have added it yet. Oh, I thought I did. All right. Well, that's going to have to be an addition. Um, okay. So just add soap. Soap note is a common soap. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So you can see here, this one's been downloaded about 1700 times, give or take 1650. Uh, very, very simple one. I see this one a lot. Uh, but you can always go through. There's really, really um, uh, nuanced ones, ones that are very specific. Uh, pelvic floor, like you see here, Jeff, soap note, you know, <laughs> Jeff. Um, and then I can go ahead and add, let's add Jeff's soap note. And if I look Jeff up here, we can edit it. And now it's, um, now it's Joe Ellen's, Joe Ellen's soap note. So thank you so much for your assistance, but we are still going to manipulate it. <laughs> and once you manipulate it, it doesn't manipulate what's in the library. No, it's you're just, just your own. Correct. Now it's yours and you can do whatever you want for it. So that's why I see a lot of people use the uh, template library because at yeah. least it gives you a baseline mm -hmm. and then you can really build on that. So we can add in an item. Maybe I do really want that body chart in there. So I'm mm -hmm. going to add that in. Maybe I don't need this analysis and plan and I'm going to delete that. And what's funny is when I'm showing these, I always delete like the most important part of it. <laughs> um, but forgive me. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now we have ours and we can do something else as well to help with the um, further customizations for our chart. So that's in our phrases section. So using phrases, I hear like dot phrases, keywords, there's so many ways to reference mm -hmm. this. But if I go ahead and do a new phrase, maybe it's a really technical term that I just hate typing out. Uh, you can put that in here with a shortcut. Do you have a technical term that I can attempt to oh, type? Oh, Kat, do I have a technical term? <laughs> probably, probably. Uh, let's do, let's do... Uh... I don't know now you put me on the spot. <laughs> Hemodynamic response. Hemo <laughs> dynamic. DIY, yep. All together or something? All together. Yeah. Response. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna put in uh HD for hemodynamic and save. So now let's go see what that looks like actually utilizing it. And I'm gonna show you my favorite part of Jane. So that is the day view. Oh. Somebody's been playing around on my. Here we go. Ellen. <laughs> that is the day view. So if I come in, I'm going to book a really quick appointment for Nina. Actually, let's do prenatal so it's nice and pink for me. Again, ignoring that insurance. Perfect. 
So the reason why I love the day view is because you're going to be able to see your full day on the left hand side work through your clients. You're going to be able to chart in the middle once you select that client. And if I select it once more, the appointment panel is here and I can make changes um, to the notes. I can create that super bill if maybe I'm on the cash plan. I can add in insurance information, whatever uh, alterations I need to make to the appointment panel. So this is where you can kind of live as a practitioner is in this section. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do a new chart entry. And we are looking for Joe Ellen Soap, previously Jeff. And I'm going to go in and we are going to use our, in any text box area, I can go in and actually add my uh, phrase, my keyword, my dot phrase. So I'm going to use my forward slash and that's going to kind of open up that option for me. And if I type in HD, oh, it's going to show it there. I'll press enter and it pops it right into place for me. And this can get really extensive. I have mm -hmm. um, some phrases that are a full paragraph. Mm -hmm. so it can get um, pretty detailed. I love that. I think that I think dot phrases or phrases in general can be really um, and can help you with the time consuming process and cut down on your documentation time. So um, I think the ability to add in more customized to you is, is a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. 100%. Another option that we do have is uh, because we are web-based, you'll be able to use your own computer's dictation in order to actually dictate to your chart as well. So that text will populate. Mm -hmm. I will test it out. I'm so sorry. My <laughs> button is not working. <laughs> I, haven't I haven't tried that yet. I actually might like that. You, honestly, it is really, really cool. Um, dictation is a really fantastic tool. Um, it's also good for accessibility, yep. right? For for some practitioners who don't want to have to or don't want to be able to type all that much. Or if you're a mobile PT and you're driving, in theory, you could be dictating and dictate and move. Exactly. I mean, obviously, don't be typing while you're don't driving. Don't be typing. Yes, we don't. <laughs> but dictation. I mean, yes. that's not a bad idea. It's really, really cool. Now, something else I want to showcase when it comes to using the chart is some practitioners really like to chart their billing and diagnosis codes. Mm -hmm. So uh, another little uh, shortcut I'm going to use instead mm -hmm. of the um, forward slash is going to be the, I know this is the pound symbol, <laughs> but I'm a product of my generation. Hashtag. And, I'm the hashtag. <laughs> and but now I'm going to be able to enter in my uh, code here. And I'm so sorry, what was the code we used previously? Um, 971, oh, nope. Nine seven zero zero one. Nine seven zero. That is, I have cobwebs. I'm pulling them out. <laughs> I'm just pulling today. But really? something this we could do is very easily just type it out the actual phrase. So maybe mm -hmm. pain in the left shoulder. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and select that. So I can do this in any text box area through my chart as I'm making my selections, as I'm typing in. Maybe we're talking about this shoulder. I wanted to do that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and then I can type in pain. Oh, that's not the right symbol. There we go. Pain in right shoulder. That is the right, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then when we are through, we can edit our billing codes and everything's going to populate for us here. I'm going to select all the billing and diagnosis codes that we've used in this case, although you can spe specify and actually move around their um, their order and update that billing. So it just pops right into place for me here. I think that's wonderful. I've never used that function. Does the edit billing piece come in because you've added those hashtags above or is that implemented in and I've just never noticed it? <laughs> it's only there if you have the, um, uh, the insurance plan. So I was not, like, wait a second, I have never seen that, but that is beautiful. Okay. Yeah, it's really, really handy. And yeah. I have some practitioners who just love to build a uh, chart their billing and diagnosis mm -hmm. codes. I had somebody who ended up with 17 and I'm like, we might need to reduce that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it does make it a little bit more functional from a um, insurance payment perspective and everything is in one place. Um, so if you're ever pulling a note, it's it's built right in. It's not in a separate portal. So I think that, you know, if I was utilizing insurance, that would be a great tool. 
Yes. So another really cool tool. I'm going to go ahead and sign off on this, but yep. something actually just to keep in mind before I show the tool is once a chart is signed off on, it is in fact closed up. You can see the lock is closed. That means that we can't make any changes to the original statement, um, but you can always go in and amend. Mm -hmm. There's no requirement to have this signed off on before you bill, before you um, send off to insurance. But of course, we want to um, get that signed off on as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. um, but another really great tool, and what should be pretty standard at this point uh, to save practitioners time, is to be able to duplicate. So if mm -hmm. I go ahead and duplicate this note, I'm probably seeing my client for similar items. I'm, everything is still in place. I've got my um, hemodynamic response there. Uh, I've got my my billing and diagnosis codes, mm -hmm. probably not in the right spots, but that's okay. We're playing around. Um, and everything needs everything is where it needs to be. And then I can just make adjustments uh, based on this particular treatment. Yeah, I think that's great. I think for, for me, one of my favorite parts about Jane is the customizability of the notes. And because I'm in a little bit more of a rare field, uh, mm -hmm. Some of the library stuff really didn't fit what I need. So I have like a breathing eval. I have a, a eval specific to patients who have heart disease. I have a, mm -hmm. a eval specific to COVID and long COVID. And so I can easily have my prompts for my eval, whether it's virtual or in person, like, ready to go. Um, so, so I think that's, I think it's a, a great feature. And from someone who still does billing in the hospital setting, I actually like the typing versus okay. just the click boxes. And there's, mm -hmm. there's more spaces that you can actually see. Um, some of the other billing things are like Excel boxes and you're typing a paragraph in a mm -hmm. cell. And I don't know, for me, that just, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And it's your, it's totally up to your preference, your workflow, the mm -hmm. way that you like things, maybe you like things to be on a scale rather mm -hmm. than a checkbox. So a hundred percent, it can be whatever you need it to be. Absolutely. I've even added uh, RPE scale and RPD scale. So for my cardio palm people. And so when the person is exercising, I just drag it along the scale. I don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. And that's my favorite phrase. <laughs> tell you how many times I say that when I'm showcasing Jane. Why reinvent the wheel? 100%. So a couple of other little areas that we'll touch on really quickly here is maybe this uh, objective findings, this area specifically is important to me. Um, so I actually wanna pin this item and you can see this pins just this, por this portion. And if I come up to the top, here mm -hmm. it is. So this is helpful. If maybe I want to keep something really top of mind, be able to locate it, view it in the chart that it's from. Um, or maybe I just want to be able to duplicate just that one section. So I'm going to actually create a new chart, but just with the objective findings. Okay. Okay. And then I can maybe add on a note or some vitals, whatever it might be there. Yeah. Um, and it, it, this is the only part that carries over for me. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to unpin this just because I like to keep it nice and clean. Yeah. But something else that I see is the medical alert being used. So the medical alert, again, it's always fun to see how we put things in place and then how it gets used. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, maybe we wanted to specify that this client has a pacemaker. It's in their chart, but we just want like alarm bells right at the top of their chart for us to notice when we log in. Um, but what I see it being utilized for as well is bonding. So maybe they let you know that their dog's name is Coco. Hmm. And you're like, how's Coco doing? And they're like, oh my gosh, that is so <laughs> fun that you remembered my dog's name. And you're like, yep, I have the best sure do. that there has ever been. Oh, I really like that. I would, I I don't know if I would utilize it for that, but that's a that's a great way because then it stays at the top. Exactly. Every time and you open it up. Yeah, and it's not a part of the actual medical chart. So if there's ever a need to export your charts, that is not present. Yeah, Coco's not going out to Blue Cross Blue Shield. Right. Well, that's awesome. Well, Kat, thank you so much for your time. You did a wonderful job. And hopefully this was helpful for everyone who is thinking about Jane.